So in this video, we're going to look at understanding the first two master equations of kinematics. Um, on our course in Ireland, that is, those equations are given to you in your formula and tables booklets. But we're going to look at deriving those. Once you know those two, uh, you can answer pretty much any question on kinematics using those just those two. The, the, the two others, the third and fourth, are just derived from the first two. A little bit of notation first. Let me just make sure all of this is getting in. So the notation I'm using, U is the initial velocity, V is the final velocity of an object in motion. A represents acceleration. S is displacement, which is defined, remember, as being change of position. And I'm using T for change in time. Notice I didn't bother putting in the delta. You'll often see delta T for change in time there as well. Um, a couple of other things to know before we derive these. Of course, this is from the last worksheet I gave you. I'm hoping that you understand this, that if a sequence increases or decreases at a constant rate, then the mean of the sequence is equal to the mean of the first and last terms in the sequence. So in an arithmetic or linear sequence, to find the mean of the whole sequence, once you know it's arithmetic or linear, you only actually have to find the mean of the first and last terms. That'll give you the mean of the whole sequence. The other thing is just you've got to know the definition of average velocity. Let me write it down. Average velocity V bar is defined as being displacement divided by the change in time. Okay, displacement divided by the change of time. You, sometimes you'll see that written as delta x for displacement over delta t, change in time. Okay, average velocity is displacement divided by change in time. And remember, you know, all your work from junior cert. A little multiplication triangle here. Displacement, average velocity, change in time. So I can rewrite that equation as saying displacement S is equal to V bar, the average velocity multiplied by T. And that's going to be important. We're going to be using that version of this equation. So displacement is equal to average velocity multiplied by change in time. Okay, average velocity multiplied by change in time. You've got to know these things in order to be able to understand the master equations. Okay, this is an important mathematical result. So, the first thing is, if I suppose A is constant, in other words, we said A, let me just throw this up again, A represents acceleration. So, suppose the acceleration is constant. Well, if the acceleration is constant, that means the velocity is increasing at a constant rate, or the velocity is decreasing at a constant rate. So, if I look at, you know, if I think about uh, that, at each second, the velocity is increasing by the same amount. So if that's true, what we have, if we look at the velocity, you know, we have our initial velocity, u. And then after, say, some kind of period of time, let's say one second, uh, you know, we might have u plus whatever the acceleration is. And then after another second, we'd have u plus that acceleration plus that acceleration again, plus 2a. The increase here is an increase of whatever the acceleration is. So if the acceleration is constant, we have the velocity increasing at a time, constant rate. So if the velocity is increasing at a constant rate, well, then the average velocity will be equal to the average of the first and last terms in that sequence, okay? From this result here, if a sequence increases or decreases at a constant rate, then the mean of the sequence is equal to the mean of the first and last terms. So if the velocity is increasing at a constant rate, then the average velocity is going to be equal to the average of the first and last terms. My first term will be my initial velocity, u, my last term will be my final velocity, which we call v. Uh, and the average of those two things is going to be uh, u plus v over 2. The other thing we remember back, we said that the displacement is always equal to the average velocity multiplied by time. That's from the definition of average velocity. So if I 
Take that, that means that the displacement is equal to the average velocity, which is u plus v over 2 multiplied by t. And that is one of my master equations of kinematics. Being able to translate that into English, of course, is crucial. Displacement is equal to initial velocity plus final velocity over 2 multiplied by t. But crucially, this only works if the acceleration is constant. So that's one of my master equations of kinematics. Let's call it our first one. So there's my first master equation of kinematics. S is equal to u plus v over 2 multiplied by t, where s is displacement, u is initial velocity, v is final velocity, t is change in time. And crucially, what makes all this work is that the acceleration is constant. If the acceleration is not constant, then this is useless. It is, uh, it doesn't make any sense. I want to look at deriving my second master equation of kinematics, which is just again based on the fact that once again we're supposing the acceleration is constant. And this is easily explained if I look at a little, you know, velocity versus time table, you know, what we have is velocity over some amount of time, you know, time, zero seconds, one second, two seconds, three seconds, etc. Okay, and let's suppose the acceleration is equal to a meters per second per second. So every second, my velocity is increasing by a meters per second. So we start off with an initial velocity at time zero. After one second, my velocity, so if the time increases by one here from zero to one, well, my velocity is increasing by whatever the acceleration is. It's a meters per second every second. So that's going to give me u plus a. And after another increase of one second in time, well, my velocity is increasing by a again. We get u plus 2a. And after three seconds, you know, one more second of time, well, now we've got u plus another a added onto that will give me 3a. And what I'm hoping you see is the connection between this coefficient in front of a and the length of time. So it doesn't take a huge amount of imagination to jump forward and say, well, can I generalize for t seconds, a change in time of t seconds? Well, it's always got u, my initial velocity, plus then it's got whatever the time is, t, multiplied by the acceleration. So t a, or I'm going to write a t. And that's going to be my velocity at t seconds. So if a is constant, then after t seconds, my velocity is going to equal to my initial velocity plus the acceleration multiplied by the change in time, t. Again, remember that may, that is based on the fact if the acceleration is constant, that's absolutely crucial, then my velocity after t seconds is v equal to u plus a t. So that's my second master equation. There's my first master equation. There's my second master equation. And make sure you understand them, not just remember the equations, but understand where they come from. Try to explain them to somebody else. Okay.